All right. Well, let's let's go into like you know the like the things that we can do. Like, what is the like what what is the you know in terms of like risk and danger? Like, where should our attention be focused? I think that's a really good question because um, otherwise you can drive yourself literally crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, it's paralyzing, right? It, it like, is. You don't want to be like the the boy in the bubble, and right. God forbid that bubble is made out of plastic, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you going to do then? Oh. Um, like Howard Hughes, you're going to be like in the room and you're going to, yeah. yeah you're going and to you're like, like, and turn the heat up and then all that plastic from the bubble. Oh no. So I think the worst offenders, right? So it's like, it's sort of like an imperfect solution, but really like you really want to sort of avoid the worst offenders. When it comes to the worst offenders, first of all, heating plastic, absolutely a no. So you want to, of course, never microwave anything in plastic, but also you have to think about these plastic bottles of water Like, yeah, they're cold when you go into the CBS and grab it out of the fridge, but like, was it cold when it was on the freight train or the boat or, you know, wherever it was to get there? And how long has it been there in the warehouse before it was in the fridge and probably been exposed to some heat? In some shipping container, you know, coming overseas, you know, in the South Pacific or something. Right. Who knows? I I would say um, now there's cases like when you're traveling, it's kind of hard to avoid water out of a plastic bottle, but for the most part, trying to not drink water out of a plastic bottle is 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 really advisable because that is a, a big source of microplastics. And then if you can get a, well, first of all, any type of activated carbon filter will filter out a lot of the plastic associated chemicals. Um, but if you really want to filter out all these microplastics in all their sizes, including nanoplastics, a reverse osmosis filter at home, whether it's a tabletop one that you just drink your water out of or it's a whole whole home filtration system is the, is the way to go because it does filter out even the nanoplastics. Now, the thing to consider with that is also it filters out essential minerals and trace elements. So you will have to make sure you're taking a nice mineral supplement, make, or you can even get some drops that are in like a glass bottle to add back to the water. Mineral drops they, they make that you can add mm. back to the water to make sure you're getting those essential minerals and trace elements what back in the, the water. What are the important minerals that it's filtering Oh, there's a out. whole, there's a whole list of them. Okay, there's a whole, another four hour. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. like magnesium and calcium and uh, manganese and iodine and lithium. Like there's a whole list of chemicals that are filtered out that, that are usually in, in the water. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, you're, like if you're taking a multivitamin supplement, most of your bases are going to be covered probably, but there's also some mineral supplements out there that are just like the, it's like the mineral supplement and that covers all the ones that are, that are uh, filtered out from reverse osmosis. Alternatively, some people like to get these drops that are specifically made for people that have reverse osmosis filters and they're in, you want to get one that's in like a glass container, not plastic. And then you want to introduce those into your water. There's also filtration systems that will reintroduce the minerals back in. Um, However, I'm not sure if those filtration systems are made of plastic. So, you know, you don't want to reintroduce the plastic after you just filtered it out. So, oh my God. That, uh, you know, you have That's to. That's crazy. Yeah. But, but I guess, I mean, look, there's a million different water, water filtration systems out there. It's sort of dizzying, you know, for the average consumer, as long as it's of reverse, the osmosis. reverse osmosis variety, exactly. you're going to be okay. You're going to be, you're going to be, yeah. yeah, you're, you're like 95% there. Right. And, and on the topic of, of plastic bottles, is there any wisdom at all in, I mean, not all plastic is, the same, right? Like there are different types of plastic bottles and you look underneath and there's the number and this is plastic safe, et cetera. Is that all bunk from your perspective, as long as it's plastic? Because there's those really thin ones that, that are crinkly, you those, know, obviously, you know, that, that this is not good, no, right? Yeah. And then there's the the thicker, more robust, like, you know, Gatorade comes in, you know, like, the, so you're like, well, these aren't exactly the same. Yes. The, you, you bring up a good point. So the crinkly ones are more like, I mean, those are like degrading, like, mm-hmm. like they're degrading, like yeah, as you're like holding in it, your like hand. in your it's, hand. Yeah. yeah. So that's the whole thing that the microplastics are being shed, like through the degradation process. Um, I would say the black plastics are like the ones to really avoid. And those are like, the reason for that is there was a, there was a study that came, was published last October. The problem with the black plastic, so think sushi container or, uh, um, like any takeout or like a rotisserie thing. or any takeaway, right. Rotisserie chicken, like container or take, takeout, 
you know, container um, or those black forks, you know, that you have at parties or whatever. Those are often, not always, but often made of recycled plastic from recycled electronics. And the study that was published, I forgot the name of a journal. It was some kind of environmental, uh, you know, health journal. Um, that journal found that those black plastics, like the black plastic spatula, for example, those plastics contain a variety of chemical chemicals that um, are carcinogen, known carcinogens. So they have like flame retardants in them, things that are just bad, bad mm. chemicals. And so they're, they seem to be even worse. So you're really avoiding the black plastic and especially heating those, right? So you think of your to-go food, it's going hot on the black plastic that's causing those chemicals to leach into your food even more. I mentioned that heat, you know, causes the, the leaching of chemicals like BPA, 55 times more. So you want to, you really want to try to avoid those black plastics also. The other, the other main offenders would be to-go coffee mugs. Those are, most to-go coffee mugs are lined with plastic and that plastic breaks down with heat and BPA and those are, you're you're drinking hot. Yeah. Something hot in there. Yeah. Yeah. So is it the same lining that you would find inside like a can of, a can soup or a can of beans? It is. Yeah, it is. And then also in a can of sparkling water, right? Like those cans are lined, aluminum cans are lined with plastic lining to protect the aluminum from corrosion from the beverage or food. So you think you think you're avoiding the plastic by drinking out of a can. Turns out you're actually drinking out of a plastic lined can. And oh God. <laughs> so if you can not then, drink those every day. Right. I had heard about like the the black plastics, but the way I heard about it was through like the spatula version, mm-hmm. right? I hadn't thought about like the to-go food packaging and all of that. And I think it brings up a, a another issue that maybe deserves a little elaboration, which is which is which is the difference between what we think of as single use plastic and then the kind of plastic that you know we all have in our houses whether it's a spatula or some other version of which it which is like robust and thick and you're like well this isn't a single use plastic like this is probably okay um no especially if you're cooking with it right because it is cooking in heat is accelerating that whole degradation process. It is, you are shedding microplastics and chemicals into the food. So you want to get wooden um, utensils, cooking utensils. And also I I would say, uh, I mean, you can use the stainless steel as well, but you want to like use Mm -hmm. stainless steel on a stainless steel pan, but avoiding also the pans lined with like nonstick stuff, right? Because that has forever chemicals in it, the Teflon stuff. So uh, yeah, I, I, I still... If, if you're putting heat in any way, shape, or form on any type of plastic, how robust it seems, it doesn't matter because the heat is really what's breaking that down. It's breaking it down and it's it's leaching into the the food or the beverage. So the heat the heat is the thing to you're talking about avoiding the worst offenders. Really, it's heat. Um, so any anything that's going to have heat with your plastic, big big time, uh, you know, try to avoid that. The water filter is another one, and then you know shellfish, probably not not something to eat all the time. It's okay once in a while, right? But like the shellfish are, are they, they have unfortunately a lot of microplastics in them. And um, fish do as well, as long as you're not eating the digestive system of the fish, you know, but it's in fish. Um, produce as well, but you wash your produce, you're better off. You're not, you're not like avoiding the, the, the food packaged in the plastics. Now, your strawberries come in a plastic container, and so you have to wash your strawberries really good, right? Because it it does shed shed particles. Now it's not like those strawberries have been in that plastic container for that long, so it's not likely that it's shedding tons and tons and tons of particles into your strawberries, right? Um, it's more likely that the strawberries take took it up from the soil that's been contaminated mm-hmm. with with the plastic. Um, but I think um, in terms of consumption, that's those are the main um, things to, to sh- sort of avoid those worst offenders. And then um, with respect to breathing it in, right? Like getting a high quality HEPA filter for your house, several rooms in your house. I mean, is it's it, they're not that expensive and you can have them, you know, in multiple, certainly in the room you're sleeping in. So getting a HEPA filter can filter out some of those microplastics as well because they are in our circulation. We do breathe them in. Um, Unfortunately, using a dryer, making sure that you're having good proper ventilation, that it's ventilating outside is very important, right? Because the microplastics are coming from our clothing. In fact, our clothing is the major, one of the major sources 
aside from the breakdown of the large plastic trash in our ocean, which is the major cause of the microplastics in our ocean, our clothing is the second major cause. So when we are, are all of our clothing that's made of all these mixed fibers, um, when we wash them, that that runoff is going into the ocean and it's full of microplastics. So um, is it is it are the are the nanoplastics part of the clothing also that are being absorbed into our skin? Do we know this or not? Like I'm, I'm thinking yeah. of like maybe these are like edge cases. Yeah. Like this is getting into yeah. neurosis land. I'm totally. thinking about like my Vitamix. I've been there. I have a Vitamix. It's it's pla- the, it's plastic. Oh no, get the stainless steel one. But it's so. thick. Yeah, like I don't have. I have the plastic one. It's a thick plastic. But sometimes like we're you know we're we're putting you know hot something hot in that and blending it up. And I'm thinking like I should probably shouldn't do that. Anymore. No. Yeah, I did the same thing. I actually yeah. just got. In the past, you know, few months since I did this deep dive, I didn't dive. know there was a stainless. There's steel. There's a stainless steel Vitamix container. I, I I got it a few months ago, and it's great. It's I got one for my I got it for my in laws. Anyone in my family that uses Vitamix, I'm like, no, you need to get this. It's two hundred dollars. It goes on. It just get the container because it'll fit on your Vitamix that you have. Um, unfortunately, friction does increase the shedding of microplastics, so blending itself also affects it. But yeah, I, I, I was doing the same thing. I was doing the same yeah. thing. And I mean, so, I don't want to be neurotic, you know? Yeah. I mean? I mean, look, you can, you can, you can take this to the X degree, right? Like you can, you can definitely go down that rabbit hole, but if there is a stainless steel Vitamix container, why not get it? If you can, it's not super expensive and you know, it, it's not going to hurt. So why not get it? I, I would say. Um, but that's not the main focus. I, I would say we've, we've discussed the, the worst yeah. offenders, right? Talk to me about how salt contributes to this problem. Yeah, so salt, especially sea salt, right? If you're getting sea salt, you're getting it from the ocean, which is polluted with microplastics. So sea salt is um, is a contributor of microplastics to people. And I, you know, and you I buy it in a pl- little plastic jar, and it's jar in a plastic too. container, exactly. And so, um, if you're gonna use salt, it's better to get like a rock salt like, you know, pink Himalayan salt, which also does have microplastics, but less. It has fewer particles than sea salt does. Uh, So, you know, salt is also a contributor. Um, I don't know that it's the main, main contributor, but um, if, if you're using salt, go for the Himalayan salt rather than the, the sea salt or even the Morton's, like the old Morton's salt, you know, Mm -hmm. that was like at everyone's table 20 years ago. Those are rock salts as well. And should we be concerned about the receipts that we're given every single day? Yes. Like I've heard a lot about this. Is there is there truth to this? Um, I mean, I've, I avoid like putting my hands on it just because this is what I've heard, but I haven't read the studies. I don't know how like uh, how robust of a problem this actually is. Um, so receipts are made of thermal paper, which are just heavily coated with BPA. And I think the first study came out, gosh, almost 10 years ago. I remember reading it 10 years ago. And um, it, it was a study that was uh, looking at people that had put lotion on their hands and then touched the the thermal paper or the receipt. And it was like the BPA that got into their circulation was like astronomical. I mean, so usually th- transdermal absorption isn't that big of a deal. Like, you know, so we're talking about our clothing. It's not like I'm absorbing microplastics through my through my skin very easily from the clothing I'm wearing. It's it's really it's, it's really more about what ends up in the water table. As yeah, a result. yeah. And sometimes, you know, if you're exercising in in that clothing, maybe you're getting some particles, but the ma- the majority of the particles that you're breathing in are not coming from your clothes directly. They're coming from the air from the other sources, right? Uh, but I do think that people that are, that ha- I, I also try to avoid receipts. And so I always opt for no receipt or can you trash it for me? But I do think people that work in, you know, in, in industry where they're, they're every ha- day. They're handling them all day long. Yeah. They should be wearing nitrile gloves. So that there have been now studies showing that people that handle handle thermal paper, which is the the receipts, and they wear, wear nitrile gloves, that blocks the BPA from being absorbed in their skin. And so um, I don't think Legtex did the same thing. It really had to be a nitrile glove. So anyone that's in that industry that's handling receipts daily really should be wearing gloves. It, it, it should it should be something that I think all, you know, companies employ like to protect their. I mean, people don't know about this, right? Mm-hmm. I think I think that they they should be told. 
So, I mean, you've got like pregnant women working behind a cash register and dealing with those BPA receipts. And I told you the study came out showing that, you know, pregnant women with higher urinary BPA have sixfold, you know, higher likelihood of having a child with autism. So yeah, there, there are little steps that can be taken that, um, that I think, you know, there's a big bang for your buck, right? Yeah. And, and certainly if you're working in an industry where you're handling the receipts, you should be wearing nitrile gloves.